Welcome to another test and teardown video. Look at this one. It's another Wood and Swartz, a type DPR. It says unsymmetric uh, Einleitung, 600 ohm. So this means um, single ended um, attenuator. And of course, the impedance in and out is 600 ohms. So the attenuation level or range goes from a zero to 130 dB. And the frequency ranges all the way from zero, of course, from zero, but to two megahertz. I don't know exactly about the connectors here. I think if I look real careful, see, it looks like we got some ceramic isolation down there and the center here is actually banana plug compatible. So you can imagine a connector that is like banana plug con compatible with a metal ring that touches the spring. We got four spring loaded contacts. So that is how you get the two megahertz. The fun thing is, this is the ground. So there's a ground wire all the way here to this banana plug. And the signal out is somehow connected via this tiny little hole into the center connector as well. So if you want a banana plug, why don't you just stick the banana plug in here? Um, this really doesn't make any sense and this is not a good way to to do... Oh, maybe it is okay to, for 2 megahertz, but I'm not happy about this. Uh, the impedance is of course 600 ohms, so yeah. I don't know, I'm not super impressed. This output connector's chassis is not connected to the front plate but it's connected to this plate. And then there is a, a like a shielded cable. And this is actually lead. Isn't that amazing? So, so you can solder it on it and this is clearly possible. So this lead coax cable goes into one of the three attenuators. So this is the input. Eingang, yeah, input, and the input is maximum 30 volts. I guess it's also going to be 30 volts out <laughs> if you have 0 dB attenuation. And again, it's the same connector, obviously, but why don't we have the same kind of banana connection here? So on the input, it's possible to use this one as a banana connector, whatever, right? So that is a little bit funny. Also, note this, uh, I don't know, maybe we can show it here from the side. A very, very big box. So this front end box here is actually, let me see if I can show you, it's really heavy. Is <laughs> actually a, 12, uh, a 3 dB attenuator. See, 3 dB. So by enabling this one, you add 3 dB to your attenuation level. See, if we put in 1 dB, 1, 0. Oh, this is 10. Yeah. So now I've added 10. But this connector here, or this switch is still enabled, right? So that is 10. So now it's 4 plus the 10. You see what I'm saying? So that is... Aha, so it's not adding 3, it is adding 30 dB, right? So this is 10s. So this this can't be removed. This 0 is a 0, right? So now we have 0, 0. Now we have 10 dB, okay? Now we have 30 dB. So this pre attenuator adds 30 dB as a, a pre attenuator and that is of course why it is 
inside its own super duper shielded extra case. So the input goes through this 30 dB attenuator. And then we just go on with everything else. So this is a, oops. So this is a 10 dB step, 10, 20, la 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 la. And this is a 1 dB attenuator. And the last one is, of course, a 0 0.1 dB attenuator step attenuator, right? So here's one fun thing. Let's go to. Okay, the range is all the way from zero, yeah, but to 130. So look at this fun thing. Okay, we add the 30 and we crank this all the way up. So that is 120. Oh, this light is annoying. So now we have 120. Let's crank this up. 129. Point but look at this point ten <laughs> isn't that cute? So this is actually one more, right? So that is of course how you make a hundred and thirty. Isn't that just cute? I love this detail. Of oh, they are really those switches are, I don't know if you can hear this, but they are certainly some kind of, I really love this user interface. It is just brilliant. Don't you just like this? It is easy and user friendly. How old is this thing? Um, by looking at the different uh, internet pages and things. Uh, also, this uh, Tay Olsen guy is the importer of all sorts of instruments to more or less all Denmark and all Copenhagen area. And this sticker is the, is the, the one that was used in the 50s. So that is actually how I date this thing. So it's definitely uh, in the 50s not in the 60s so it's quite old this one <clears throat> and it is built super super nice the numbers they are cnc are milled in we got this isolated shaft going in here and look they're all isolated from the chassis and see there's a quarks of course, this is again 600 ohm in between everything here. And by the way, they look a little bit different. The shielded boxes here. See, this is the 10 dB one. And we also got screws around. So this is the 1 dB and the 0 0.1 dB stepped. So maybe we should just try and see if it, it works before we open it and have a look. So here's what I did. I'm taking a four point resistor measurement and I set everything to zero. So now I'm measuring the DC resistance through all the switches all the way from center to center. Okay, so in four ohm setting, we got 0 0.4 ohms through all the wires and stuff. And you know what we can do here? We can just zero this out. So now we call this uh, our new super zero, okay? So let's take 0 0.1 dB. Look at that, so that was 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and so on. Let's try and go back and forward a few times and see if we hit exactly the same number. So there's a 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. I mean, 
this is just quality and can can you imagine how old this is how the heck did they do do this you can't even do this today right so here's a funny thing this is one so let's look at the number here 68.37 okay so let's dial this back to zero and let's see okay we still got zero yeah only two milliamps away okay still two milliamps so let's take one and this one Ooh, 69 see it's far from the right value <laughs> I mean, it's actually quite amazing, isn't it? In this range, they're using all the resistors that are connected in series all the way around all these those steps, right? And and all they need to match this. I'm a little bit amazed, a little bit, and a little bit impressed, I must say. Well, please correct me. If I'm wrong in this assumption, but the, since this attenuator runs in 600 ohm impedance input and output, my DC power supply is zero ohms output impedance, right? So what I've done is I took two 1200 ohms resistors and they're now in parallel. So this is as close to 600 as I can do it, right? And those are 1%. So this is now my input and the output needs to be loaded with 600 ohms so again to 1200 in parallel and this is to the to the ground and this is my dc voltmeter which is like mega giga ohms input in anyways so and i'm doing this as at zero hertz so that means we can we don't need to worry about cables and stuff like that right so if i put 10 volts on this 10 volts was 600 and we got 600 to ground so that is why we got 5 volts so this reveals the accuracy between the two resistors that I got so far so good so what if I go 10 dB but I go 20 so 20 dB volts that is ta 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 it is a factor of 10 okay so and now i got 0 0.5 not 5 but 0 0.5 almost okay so let's get back to zero again just to make this easy this is this is annoying to calculate so what i do is i dial up the input voltage to 20 okay and then i get 10. so this is now my new reference now we're happy okay so now i go down a factor of 10. i got almost one so far so good so let's go a factor of 20. no this is a factor of 10 times 10 that is a factor of 100. This is how it is now, okay? Because we are in the dB world. So this is a little bit com complicated. So this is 100 millivolts. So that is a factor of 100. So now, factor of 100 and another factor of 10. So that is a fact factor of 1,000. Wouldn't you say that? So my 10 volts is now 10 millivolts that is a factor of a thousand is it possible that we can do thousand can we do ten thousand yeah we can actually do that is it possible to do more with this meter so that was a factor of ten thousand so now it is a hundred thousand whoa that is possible look at that so i think we can do it again okay 
and here is a little bit off. That is, we are now at 120 dB. And I think this has something to do with it. Not this one actually, but the noise floor and impedance and whatnot. Maybe I can go up in, I can also also do that one. Would I be able to get any more out of this? No, I cannot. But what we could have done is we could have used a DC gain stage and gained this to get back again. Or just to get read readability. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So so we can detect those really, really low voltages. And then again we can prove that this thing works. So far so good. When it comes to DC, I am quite happy i think i want to try this at let's take 20 db and let's uh, sweep this thing and see what happens it is a little bit more complicated on the input side because i want this unit to see 600 ohms reverse and I want to give it 600 ohms this way. I also, my generator needs to see 50 ohms. So what I'm trying to do here is a resistive impedance converter that works all the way from zero. So 56 ohms is a little bit more than 50. So that means when I got here, I got 560 ohms. So that means this one plus this one is about 600 this way. You see what I'm saying? So this one should solve this on the input side. And again, on the output side, it's again, super easy. The scope got super high impedance. So that will be the 600 here. So I believe this is as close as I can do it with, you know, what kind of stuff I could find on the table. So let's try and do that. So zero dB on the attenuation. I will read the peak peak because this is where I get most out of it. So this is my input when we start and then I crank it up to 20 dB so it's a factor of 10 uh, 533 okay so this is a little bit too much right so now I find adjust my drive until I got my 500 this is what I call the reference at 1 kilohertz okay like that so this is what we need to be looking at. Oh, my cell phone here is driving this nuts. Let's see. What is the problem? Yes, it's definitely the cell phone. And this is what happens when you have a scope that is this fast. <laughs> that is crazy. So let me try and find a tune this. Yep, here we go. Very close to 500. Like that. Now I will try and play with the frequencies. Let's see how that goes. So this is the value we need to be looking at, 500, and this is 1 kilohertz. Okay, let's crank it up. 10 kilohertz. Yeah, of course the same. And 100 kilohertz. Yeah, of course the same. Let's crank it up to 1 megahertz. Still the same. Remember the specifications for this attenuator was uh, 2 megahertz. So that is 2 megahertz. Ooh, it goes down. <laughs> so that's 5 megahertz. Isn't that just amazing? Oops, 5 megahertz. All right, so. It depends a little bit on what kind of, how did they rate the specifications? Because as you can see here, we are just zero point nothing away in error, and um, maybe they specify this to be very very accurate all the way to two megahertz, and then go down over two megahertz. I don't know about the specifications because I can't find any better data. So this is one megahertz and what we can do is i can show you what happens is this is a uh, 20 so 
This is the 1 dB steps. That is 3 dB voltage. 356. So let's go back again and then find the 3 dB. 300 and oops, bring it together again. Oh, here we go. And that is 6.7 megahertz. So that is three times as high as they promised. My goodness, grief. Oh, what have we got here? Look at that. So that is the contact and there's in impotence and all that stuff. So this one is... Wow. Oh, look at the contacts. So this is how it works. This contact here, yeah, makes of course a contact with this one and it breaks. The ground connection here and here so the other two resistors to ground now form an attenuator oh yo yo this is nice you can probably see i don't know if you can see this let's see if we can film this from the side let's go closer so there is actually a little uh let's see in here is this where we can see it so there's a ground connection. Oh, this is just beautiful. And here is a ground that's connected to the chassis. I mean, this is just beautiful. And it looks like it's still, look at the brightness of that. Silver, uh, what brass maybe it's this is heavy oh, I love it when they use all sorts of absolutely beautiful Maybe it's the same. Ah, oh, now I see. This hole up here. We got two extra holes. That is probably populated in the other one because that one goes to from zero to 10 and this one only goes from zero to nine. This is just one impressive, and it's all because the resistors they choose to use in the way and the dimensions here. I mean, they could have made this work to 300 megahertz if they wanted to, because the fundamental construction here is really, really, absolutely fantastic. It has only something to do with the resistors they're using down here they're already three times as good as they need to be i think we should try and have a look in the other one so this is the 10 dB attenuator and it is exactly the same only all the resistors there are of course higher values the first resistor here is actually also a lot bigger this one goes to ground, so this is the input connection. And see, it goes to the switch. And then this switch is lifted when it is connected to the output. This one is the output. Duk. Duk. So this is, of course, the zero. Now the input goes directly to the output. So now the input goes 10. So now this is connected via this resistor here 
and then we go out here. So this is the resistors now forming an attenuator, and out we go. And 20, and so on. Really, really beautiful construction, and I don't know if you can see this, but there's a thin wire that goes up here, and this is the output, and it goes through this one and up again. And then the next one, it goes up here, and again, the output goes to the next one. Of course, they want the output to be as far away as the input as possible. It is a really, really beautiful construction. Probably took quite a while to design and manufacture all this and figure out how can we do this the smartest way and make everything here in the right impedances and stuff yeah. I wonder if it's possible to go into the 10 dB okay no the, this is the 3 the 30 dB damn it it's impossible to remember but the first one was a 30 well, I see two screws here. Well, let's see if we can have a look. So now we are inside the 30 dB attenuator. I left it in zero. See, this is the input signal. And it goes here on this thin black wire. And look how many contacts we got. Got two contacts up here. There's a wall. Two more contacts on the top, two more contacts on the bottom. Okay, so try and have a look. So this is zero, and this is 30. So, zero. Look what happened. The input is here. Now we sh connect this resistor up here. We short circuit this resistor, actually, because there is a connection at the back I don't know if that is easy to see maybe you can see it a little bit down to this those two contacts and now the signal goes this way up here on that side of the contact and that is out so this is the 0 dB and now let's do 30 so input now still connected this contact and now there's a connection here but there's not a connection here and now you will see where are they up here we see two other resistors aha and they go to ground now on the other side okay Yes, that is here. That is the connection, and that is the connection to ground. Hoo hoo! That is pretty cool. So that is definitely how it works. And we got six hundred and thirty-nine ohm, and we got nine point four kilo ohms on that one so please do the math if you like and see if this is 30 db in 600 ohms oh there's another thing i really want you to see look at this look at this thin thin wire that is in here in this isolation and this is actually the wire that goes through this quax cable so this in our conductor is this thin and this is the distance all the way out to ground to make you a 600 ohms impedance cable you see the big difference be between the normal world we are normally playing in we are normally playing with 50 ohms or 75 ohms cable remember how big and thick and fat the inner connection or conductor is it's because impedance is actually 
a thing about dimensions. Inductance versus capacity in the cable and the dimensions. So that is how it works. Yeah. That was a really, really beautiful attenuator here. With quite a lot of moving parts. And what we see in here is, of course, the indication on the front. That is a very, very good design. Yeah.